Hi guys. So this is uh, Enter Pagasto uh, to La, La Serena uh, in Chile. And now that this is a really big long day for me, I, I did uh, I did well over um, 12, just over 12 hours of riding, 900 kilometers, 550 miles. A tough day by <laughs> a tough day by any stretch, and uh, I actually left at first light and. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Drift Ghost uh, S camera. Um, one thing that, that you, if you're ever going to use that camera, and a mistake that I made was um, the SIM card. When you go and screw something on and off, and you know you change the battery, your finger can touch the SIM card and just and it doesn't pop right out. It just sits out a little bit. So you don't know that it's happened, and on this occasion, I was recording all day, and the remote works and all that sort of stuff, but nothing gets recorded. Uh, so the only recording I've got is here at the Hand of the Desert, which is about an hour out of Antofagasta. Uh, uh, for Antofagasta. And, um, it was, th this, the sun was just coming up, so I left, it, I left about an hour before first light, uh, which is not ideal to ride in the dark, but I just wanted to get here for the sunrise. Unfortunately, the sun was rising behind the hand, which meant basically, you know, with any camera, the camera struggles with the light uh, if it's coming straight at it. Best to have the light behind you for any for, for, uh, good, good photography shots. But I've got a couple of GoPro things in there. I screwed around a little bit. There's a couple of people arrived and um, sort of uh, screwed up my mojo a little bit, but uh, I was able to wait, you can see them driving off in the distance. I was able to wait a little bit longer and get a, a little video of me riding up, which is all staged and all that, but who cares. Um, but it would have been so much better having the light coming from the other direction. GoPros, just like anything else, don't really work that well. So with the Drift Ghost, if you ever use the Drift Ghost camera, which I found out, I recorded like a ton of videos. There wasn't a lot to see for the day anyway. Um, but I recorded a ton of videos and got back to the uh, got back to the the hostel where I stayed or hotel where I stayed and um, the, there was nothing on there, <laughs> so it was pretty frustrating. Uh, pressing the button and the, and the remote control says it's recording, but you know not to know, you know. Um, but it was a long, long day uh, riding. I decided to. I knew I was going to get there in time. I decided to take this little off-road route. It was only about 30 miles. It just connected two highways together because I went off on one to go to the hand of the desert and uh, it was a little bit slippery at certain times. There's a, uh, a lot of rock thrown on the ground, crushed rock, but most of it was pretty good just like it is here, you know, so it wasn't too much of a problem. But I really hate, the, the worst stuff to ride in is obviously sand and the second worst for me is, well actually I'll go, I'll go with this, I'll go sand number one. If you're not really, really skilled it's really hard and I'm not really skilled. Uh, for that that type of off-roading. I'd love to learn and I'll probably do a, a, a course next year, an, a, an advanced course to learn how to ride in the sand and stuff like that because it, it only happened to me a few times but it was a nightmare, not knowing how to do it properly, plus having a massive heavy bike. I don't think I could do too much anyway, uh, but it'll be good to learn a little bit more about that. So the road basically, once I did the cut through again, I, I ended up back on the sea, it was freaking hot as all hell but it was quite beautiful and you know when you're on a bike and you're riding it's not being hot is not so bad it's just when you stop and you got all that gear on you just I mean for me I sweat more than anybody else you'll ever know and it's just I'm just saturated um, but it was a pretty basic boring sort of ride um, but yeah number number one sand number two is when you've got a really hard packed road uh, off-roading and then and it's raining and, or it's drizzling it just gets so slippery, and these tyres that I have, which are the, which are the Heidenauer TK uh, sixty, I think they're called. Um, on the, I've got a big bike, so I've got the biggest tyre, and the tread right down the middle is basically flat. So all you're doing all the time is fighting to keep the bike up, especially if you go around a corner, or especially if you're getting tracks, like car tracks and stuff like that. It's just really slippery. And, and you know, I, the thing is, after this set of tires, I'm going to try something different and just see if it's me and my skills or whether it's more so the tires. But I mean, I didn't come, I only came off a couple of times uh, with that. So, number one, sand. Number two, hard, I'm talking hard clay, 
that's just wet on the top so it's really slippery. And uh, number three for me, and you'll see a bit of it as we go on the next few videos as we go south onto through Argentina and Chile, it's when they throw all this rock on the ground, this crust rock, Ripio, um, it's, and six inches thick of it. It's just so hard to, to get do things at a pace, especially on corners, because it's like a foot deep and stuff like that at times. And you're just gonna come off, and I saw plenty of people coming off their bikes on those roads. roads. So it wasn't that much of it. There's probably four or 500 miles of it, but it was pretty tough, you know. So yeah, so another pretty desolate, once you get, anything you go inland from is, is pretty desolate. You know, you'll see some towns with a few trees in it, and then you're back to nothingness again. No trees, nothing. But the roads were good, I have to say that the, the majority of the roads north of Santiago are very good. Um, south of Santiago is a different story altogether, but they're building it. Um, you know, I, I said to a few friends, of it's beautiful here. I said to a few friends of mine, we're probably going to be the last people riding, the last, you know, the last year or two of people riding in the next two years where eventually Route 7 and all these that are off-road roads now are eventually going to be all paved because they're already started building them. Um, which is a little bit sad for me. I mean, obviously it's fun, but it just means more people are going to ride those routes and it's just a tough ride, but it's very rewarding. So anyway, I got to La Serena around 6 p.m., stayed at a pretty crappy hotel, no Wi-Fi or very little Wi-Fi, and was just ready again to go for the next big long road uh, trip the following day, which was to uh, which was to San Diego, and I couldn't wait to get there. I was a bit worried about my tyres by now, and there's a few things happening on my bike that needed really fixing up, and I'll talk about that in the next video, uh, which will be another short video because, uh, again, I didn't realise that I hadn't been recording until I got to San Diego. All right, thanks, guys.